Ah, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, let us bless the Lord at all times. Why? Because He's ever merciful. He's ever good. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. Hello there, this is I'm Patrick Quino bringing you the platform called Faith Moment, a time and a moment where we come to share the Word of God to increase our understanding in the knowledge of Him and all that He has given and promised us to receive. We've been talking about the greatest promise God gave us through Jesus. And um, this is the second day of this week of uh, this series concerning the Holy Spirit and the world. The Holy Spirit or the world. In other words, we have a choice to make. The Holy Spirit or the world. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are thanking you this morning again for blessing us with this new day. This is the day, Lord, indeed you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, Spirit of the living God, give us an understanding of that, what it means to rejoice and be glad in that which we did not create, but has been created by our Heavenly Father. Bring us to this dispensation of understanding to even understand the grace, this time of grace, to understand grace, to understand what it means to activate our faith in you. For you have given us a promise and the promise is come. But do we know him? Help us, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we are about to expose you. <laughs> but glorify yourself in the life of your people in Jesus name amen all right if you are joining and um, wherever you are under the sound of my voice we've been talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit the promise of the Holy Spirit that God through Jesus we receive Jesus gave us a promise he gave us a promise before his departure back to the Father after he has finished his work for which we receive and believe it that uh, he has now brought us even us the Gentiles into the banqueting table of God by reinstituting and reestablishing a better covenant understand this and um, we are to come to that place that we know that it is he it is he who has blessed us so love us so much that he did not condemn us but giving us another opportunity for us to come into this dispensation um, of grace now the promise God gave us through Jesus where Jesus uh, before he departed um, which is um, that he will send, he will pray the Father. He will pray the Father to send us another helper. And um, the helper has come. But do many know him? Do many know him? The word of God tells us that the world does not know him because they can't receive him and they don't know him. The world do not know the Holy Spirit. According to uh, John chapter 14, the world does not know the Holy Spirit. Sam, God bless you for coming on this platform. Please share it to you. Tag somebody and share it to um, spread the gospel. The world do not know the Holy Spirit. But the question now is, does you, the believer, know the Holy Spirit? It's one thing to understand that the world don't know the Holy Spirit. But do you? know the Holy Spirit and this is where um, we've come to uh, discuss this we've come to um, throw more light on this subject for us to know that beloved we are not Jesus he, he cares so much he says I'm not going to leave you like that I'm not going to leave you as orphans with no help now that is somebody who cares 
that is somebody who cares for us he says i'm not going to leave you allison happy birthday to you and god bless you celebrate your day girl this is your day all right and all the birthday you know children of god today celebrate your birthday all over we we thank god for your life now we need to come to understand that um, the Holy Spirit, um, the promise of the Holy Spirit has come. But have you received him? Have you received him? Or maybe you don't know because see Jesus, like I said, uh, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will pray the Father to send you another helper. I came to help you and I came to help you from what you couldn't handle. All right and brought you close to God now because what you couldn't handle you know brought a distance between you and him and the father and that is by not being able to fulfill the law all right so I came not to disown the law I came to own it upon myself on your behalf on our behalf and fulfill it for you and brought you now back to God establishing a new covenant a new covenant through his blood remember the covenant was a serious business and still a serious business a covenant is an agreement uh, that um, takes you know more than two people and it only can be broken by by death by death or by blood it's a serious thing and so God establishing that with man, man was not able to handle that. And so Jesus came to help us. And that is why I, 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 uh, I refer to him, Jesus, as a helper. Why? Because he said, I will send you another helper. Now that I have come to help you, all right, to be able not to be condemned, have an everlasting condemnation on your life because you are not able to handle you know your part of the covenant i have come to help you out to make a way for you now i have therefore instituted on your behalf a new covenant and this new covenant because of the shedding of blood remember that in the old dispensation boris god bless you my brother in the old dispensation blood is always used all right for an atonement of the sins of the people for which scripture tells you and i that the priest you know perform those sacrifices go to the sanctuary to do that once a year just once a year once a year now do you sin once a year so all these things was was a mess was nothing but a mess that even the priest himself i mean himself was 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 not all that together are you listening so god needed not to destroy his people for god so loved the world and so therefore he had to send his divine only begotten son jesus christ to come and become the lamb to share his blood and um, to bring us into a new covenant and this new covenant is about you believing on him receiving him to be part of it <clears throat> are you listening to me in that old covenant it was a selected people all right chosen in this new covenant you and I, the Gentiles, <clears throat> are now in by receiving that which has been done for you and I. That is what gives, that is our passport. That is our visa. That is our license to get in. Are you listening? And so if you are not in Christ, I think I, I can say that you are not in it based on the word of god based on the word of god now interestingly yesterday i met with a gentleman who uh, 
who had just, you know, it, it wasn't, um, it was about something that has to do with ministry and um, some conversation came up. And uh, interestingly, I mean, it's interesting what be people believe. And uh, I, I, I'm, he believes that he was created by molecules. <laughs> some molecules from, from somewhere, space somewhere and all that. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's really amazing. Uh, and so, how how truthful is the word of God? Now here is is a person. And just imagine that millions of him are on the face of this earth who believe that they were they were created by molecules. And so, how truthful is it is that? The promise and the person of the Holy Spirit is not known to the world. They don't know him. The world don't know him. I mean, how does somebody who believes he was, he, be, he became a human being by molecules, know anything about the Holy Spirit? So you see what Jesus is saying. Go with me. Let's, let's confirm. I'm not just saying this thing to you. Listen to what Jesus is saying. In John chapter 14. Look at that. John chapter 14, verse 15 says, uh, I want to start from there. If you love me, keep my commandment, Jesus says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The helper will abide with you forever. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because the world neither sees him nor knows him the world don't know him beloved the world do not know the holy spirit but you know him referring to you the believer you know him right you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you he dwells with you and he will be in you now if the holy spirit dwells in you and he will be in you then that is to that is telling me that you know the holy spirit but do you and that is a question that you, uh, the believer, must answer that for yourself. Are you listening? Now, he says the spirit of truth. Now, the spirit of truth. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. But, well, but, but a pastor, he didn't say the, 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 the Holy Spirit. He said the spirit of truth. Okay, well, Jesus is referring to the Holy Spirit. Remember in Acts 2, he told the, the disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit. All right? To wait for the Holy Spirit. The Comforter, all right, the Paraclete. That name came uh, come from the Greek word Parakletos, all right. And I, normally, I don't like to go into all those stuff. Just, just keep it simple, all right. Now, look at um, verse twenty six of chapter fourteen, John fourteen. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit. Ah, it's not only the Spirit of Truth, but the Holy Spirit. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance. He will bring you to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Jesus is talking to us. First, he says, I, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. How can the world receive? The Holy Spirit that they don't know how can they receive him how can the world receive him unless you and I go and tell the world and present him and this is what I'm doing this is what he, he's not released me from talking about him he's not released me uh, if, if if you if you check you know those of you who've been following me for some time if you check my ministry for the past 20 years or so, I speak more on the subject of faith, your faith in God. Are you listening? But I've not been released. He, you know, he hasn't released me yet because I, 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 and, and I can understand why, because he's teaching me th things about him that I didn't know myself before. I didn't know. And I'm so glad that, uh, you know, I, I He's, he's arrested me here because I've asked him to do that. I've asked him to possess me, just possess me like I, I just possess me, period. 
Are you listening to me? So this, the helper, you remember Jesus says, I'll pray the Father to send you another, another helper. Another one. Another one. Because he, Jesus, was a helper. Like I said, he, he came to help us out of the old law, out of the old covenant, which could not be kept. He came to help us. Because remember, he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 there, I believe he says, I didn't come to destroy the old law. I came to fulfill it. Fulfill it for who? Himself? For no, for you and I. Praise God. He came to fulfill it for you and I. Hallelujah. And so he says, I was send you another helper and this is yeah is he finished his work on the earth and he has to leave back to the father so he came to form he, he said i will send you another helper the spirit whom the world cannot receive the spirit of truth the spirit of truth and now 26 says but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name in my name so the holy spirit came in the name of jesus remember what john the baptist says that um, he is baptizing with water, but he, who is coming after him is who is, is greater than he, John the Baptist. And this person will baptize you in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Are you listening to me? So, no Jesus, no Holy Spirit. No Jesus, no Holy Spirit. Period. Don't, don't, you cannot put Jesus somewhere, pick up the Holy Spirit and says, well, are you kidding? Look at it, it says, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. So the Holy Spirit is a representative of Jesus. Are you listening? Now, so the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. <laughs> and, uh, but have you? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Because, beloved, it is so very important for you to understand this. Now, go with me to John, the, um, the 15th chapter. Look at John, the 15th chapter. We left the 14th, now the 15th chapter. The same 26th verse. The same 26th verse. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you. Who is talking here? Who is going to send the Helper? Look at Jesus still talking here. Whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth. Here, here he is again, the Spirit of truth. Who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So you see that there's no, there's no vacuum, there's no, you know, there's no room for no debate concerning the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. No debate. There's no room for that. Are you listening because here we see it so the holy spirit is a representative of jesus so how do you not receive jesus and you want the holy spirit ask yourself that you want the holy spirit but you don't want jesus it doesn't work like i told this young guy you know this muslim guy you 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 cannot you know like you you want the yolk of the egg, but you don't want the egg to break. <laughs> it don't work. It doesn't work. So if the world has not received Jesus, how can they receive the Holy Spirit? How can they receive the Holy Spirit? And that's why he said, no, the world do not know him because they cannot receive him. But to them that receive, glory be to God. To them that receive. So you see that this dispensation, this new covenant, okay, you can make all the noise you want. <laughs> this new covenant, this new dispensation, glory be to God, the voice is just messing somebody up. All right? This dispensation and this new um, covenant, it has to do with what Jesus has done. Are you listening? It has to do with Jesus. So without receiving Jesus, beloved, it's indication that you do not know 
nothing about the Holy Spirit. If you are not, you don't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. Quickly go with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans the 8th chapter. Beloved, the Holy Spirit or the world. I'm speaking to somebody who have one foot in, in God and another foot in the world. It doesn't work. It was not going to help you. Look at verse 9. But you are not in the flesh. The world is full of fleshy stuff. But in the spirit, in the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the part I want you to look at it. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he or she is not of him. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, the Bible says, he is not his. You are not of God. You are not of Christ. If you, the Spirit of Christ is not in you. Are you listening? So how do you determine that the Holy Spirit is in, I mean, is, is operating and yet you don't even know who He is. You don't know who He is. You do not know who the Holy Spirit is. Now, let me just read a short commentary to you. God is the Father of all who believes in Christ, in a special sense, not shared by unbelievers. Did you hear that? You hear that? God is the Father of all who believe in Christ Jesus, in a very special sense, which the unbelievers cannot share that. Now, first of all, because they have they have a new standing before God. Now, while unbelievers are the offsprings of God because He created them. If you go to the book of Acts, you see that Acts 17, 28, 29. All right. They do not have the standing of sons. They do not have the standing of of sons because he created them they do not have the standing of sons now their standing is rather as condemned sinners before God the judge before God the judge so if you are not in Christ you are condemned why now look at uh, chapter 8 of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the things of the world, but the things of the Spirit. There's now no condemnation. So you are condemned if you are not in Christ, basically. If you are not in Christ. All right? Now, when a person believes in Christ as Savior, his estate is wonderfully changed from grim condemnation to privileged sonship. Now, this new standing grants to all believers the legal right and spiritual privileges of divine sonship. And that is to be heirs of God and join heirs with Christ Jesus. Let's look at um, verse 17 of, of, um, of what I just said here. Um, verse 15. What, what, verse 15 of, the, of Romans. Stay with me in Romans 8. Don't go nowhere. Now, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we call, we cry out, Abba, Father. Okay, verse 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, if the spirit of Christ is in you, he bears witness with your spirit that we are children of God. 
And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed join us with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. If indeed, but we are joint heirs. Why? Because we are in Christ. Beloved, the world do not know the Holy Spirit because they have not received Jesus. This is why it is very important, beloved, if you are a child of God. Very, very important that if you are a child of God, or if you have not yet given your life to Jesus, it is so paramount and important for you to do that. It is so important. This has nothing to do with going to church, beloved. I said this so, so many times. It has nothing to go, it has nothing of going to church. Going to church don't make you a Christian. Interestingly, this uh, gentleman who was talking about he believes he's made out of molecules and all that. He, I mean, he was telling me he's been to church before. He's been to church. I wouldn't even mention names of the places that he went to, but he was in church. <laughs> Are you listening? Yeah. He was in church. He was he been in church. Going to church don't make you a Christian. But Christians go to church. That is why you, you it's like you know that you can't wait to be in the house of God when it's time. Because any any true Christian or believer who knows it's time, it's time to go to be in the assembling of the saints do not want to stay home but going to church however going to church does not make you a christian i hope i didn't mess up your religion <laughs> are you listening going to church do not make you a christian however a child of god knows just can wait to be in the house of god when it's time Okay, let's move on. So the Holy Spirit now is come. It's come to do what? Well, if we don't even know nothing about him, let us just take one of his attributes and that he's a helper. He's a helper. So the Holy Spirit has come to help us in what? In every area of our lives. In every area. In every area wherever area you need him so shall he be if you are of Christ look with me to another verse 26 here of Romans 8 26 26 likewise the Spirit also helps helps underline the word the word help the spirit of god is a helper the holy spirit is a helper likewise the spirit also helps in our weakness the spirit of god helps in our weakness i don't know whichever which area of weakness you can plug in yourself the spirit of the the, uh, the spirit helps in our weakness for we do not even know what we should pray for us we ought to. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. And that this is even in the area of prayer. That sometimes you don't even know what to pray. Especially when you are facing or going through, like Jesus says, tribulations in this world. Jesus has tribulations. In this world, you will go through, you will face tribulations. In this world, you will face through, you will, you will face all manner of tribulations and all manner of challenges. But he says, don't worry because he has already overcome. Are you listening? Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus said, 
<laughs> he has overcome. Now, if you don't even know the Bible says, sometimes you don't even know how to pray and how, how you ought to pray. But the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Do you know Him? The Holy Spirit is not only here to get you to have some chills in your body and glory, you know, those shaking stuff. And when the drums is going on in the church, all the, you know, you know, heartbeat and all those, those you know, and, you know, be jumping and, and all that. And it's like, that's the Holy Ghost have shown up. Please. Is it? Is it? The Holy Spirit is here to help us. If nothing else is here to help us, where do you need help? Which area of your life do you need help? If Christ is in you, then you should have the help of the Holy Spirit. If Christ, if, that's right, if. So if you are playing with Christ, then you need to check yourself. The things of the world are the things of flesh. Flesh is the world. Fleshly stuff. Flesh. Oh, you can see a lot of flesh. Go, go to town today. Just, just by going to see, you will see flesh. Everything. The billboards, the, the advertisement on TV, all that is. And we even bring that into the church. The place of worship. Flesh. 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 Because if we don't do it the way the world is doing it, we cannot get the world to come in. Have, have you tried, tried talking to somebody who is so much into whatever they are that they ended up bringing you into whatever they are doing? when you are tempted to bring them to God. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you can't do it. You can't even win souls. You can't, you can't. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot. And this is why it's so important for you to understand that you need the Holy Spirit who is here you need to welcome him and receive him like you have never received anything before. Like you've never received anything, any promise before. That is, to me, that was a, this is the best promise after the finished work of Jesus Christ. But if, verse 9 says, if you are not in the flesh, if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not of him. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, that individual is not of Christ. But if the Spirit of him, verse 11, even the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life, not death, he will give life to your mortal body, bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So the question, beloved, is is it the Holy Spirit or the world? Concerning you, is it the Holy Spirit or the world? Is it the Holy Spirit or the world? That is a question you should answer yourself. The Holy Spirit or the world? You, the world, do not know the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that. The world do not know the Holy Spirit. But you who should know the Holy Spirit are operating 
like the way the world operates. Oh yeah, yeah, somebody will say, well, but Jesus says that learn from, learn the way the world do business and then, do you really understand that scripture? Take your time and let the Holy Spirit help you. One of the things I want to please point out today is that you cannot understand the scripture without the help of the Holy Spirit. No, you can't. No, mm -mm. no, the word of God was inspired by God for men to write this down. Yesterday, this gentleman again, I'm just bringing him, said, well, there is somebody, somebody just out of their head, just wrote some stuff and all that. Well, the word of God is an inspired word by God. This is what God wants you and I to know. Concerning him and how he has operate, operated through people. People. And this is your dispensation as a people. And with that understanding, you will know how to walk. And how to live your life. But if you don't receive him, you will not be able to understand this word. You cannot read the Bible as you read a newspaper and think you understand what God is saying. The spirit that is behind the person, he reveals to you, he reveals to you what that person is saying. Shall I prove it to you? Go with me to 1 Corinthians. Let me prove it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me prove it to you. Go with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse 6. However we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Wisdom. Talking about wisdom. Who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this world. Nor of the rulers of this age. Who are coming to nothing. Did you hear that? Coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For which none of the rulers of this age knew. For they had known they would not have even crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard. Nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for those who love him. Are you listening? Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through who? The world? God has revealed the things he has prepared, the promises in his word through who? The world? No. His spirit. His spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes. Yes, the deep things of God. You want to know the deep things of you. You want to know even just the fundamentals. You need the Holy Spirit. Much more the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man. Except the spirit of the man which is in him. So if the Holy Spirit is in you. Then the Holy Spirit will reveal. And give you a better understanding of the word of God. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not understand the Word of God. You will not understand this Bible. Oh yes, I did say that. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not understand this Bible. You will read it and not understand it. For verse, for verse 11. For what, what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so... No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So, beloved, without the Holy Spirit, you ain't going to know this Word of God. Trust me. No wonder you, 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 divide, you don't divide the Word of God in truth. Because without the Holy Spirit, you will not you will not be able you will read the Bible, yes, but you will not understand it. You will not. You will quote it, all right, praise God, but you will not understand it. It wouldn't and, and it would not benefit you. 
the word of God would not benefit you if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2, 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Do you understand? Did you hear that? You want to know the things of God, beloved, you cannot know them the way the world operates. If you want to know the things of God, you will know the things of God by the Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you ain't going to know the Word of God. Don't let anybody fool you. Anybody who tells you you don't need the Holy Spirit to know the Word of God, that is an antichrist. And you need to run away from that person as fast as you can. The world, Jesus says in John chapter chapter 14, 17, the, the world do not know the Holy Spirit. But do you know the Holy Spirit? He says in 16, I will, I will pray the Father to send you a helper. Another helper, he says. Not just a helper, another helper. And he will help you in all your ways. He will help you in everything. In every area of your life. The Holy Spirit will help you. But if you don't know Him, how can He help you? How can the, the, the Holy Spirit help the world, this, this, this dying world? How can He help? The world don't know Him. Am I teaching you something? Beloved, if you don't know the Holy Spirit, how can the Holy Spirit help you in your time of need? In your time of, 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 of tribulation? In your time of of whatever you may be going through how can the holy spirit help you how can you call on him whom you do not know how can you do that the world don't know him but do you know him do you know the holy spirit beloved you need the holy spirit i'm presenting the holy spirit to you because this i mean uh, I'm beginning to get a deeper understanding about some things. It's a, it's, it, it's a mind blowing. Now it tells me, I mean, I, I think I shared that with you about this scripture that says that the race is not for the swift. <laughs> this race, this particular one, is not for the swift. It's not for the swift. It's exciting to know, to know that uh, the Holy Spirit is teaching you things that maybe you didn't know before. And uh, it's, it's just exciting. It's exciting. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it brings you to, you know, worryless environment, worryless atmosphere, because you just know that you just know that you just know that all you know is that you just know that irrespective of all that you just know that ain't nothing going to take that what you know from you because you just know that you know that it, it is all well <laughs> and it's exciting it's exciting it's it's a it puts such a joy in your heart that you just know that it's going to happen it's going to happen um, so I used to be, have um, uh, an, an and, uh, advertisement in this uh, on the television. This young guy talks about I think, uh, an education, something that has to do with the education. And he says, uh, you know, uh, I know I'm young, and but I'm going to grow. I'm going to go through uh, my school, and maybe when I graduate, I'll become a, a mayor or governor or something, and you know, to try to help people. And you know, I, I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I love that. You, because you are you are confident, confident in whom you have believed. You have confidence in whom you have believed that you know that is going to happen. Because the Holy Spirit is here with us.
us. But if you don't know him, how can the Holy Spirit help you? If you don't know him, how can he help? So, understanding the word of God, you need the Holy Spirit. I just prove it to you. If you are just joining me, please go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. All right, read from verse 6 down here. He says, look at verse 6. It says, but God has revealed to us through his spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches all things. Yes, even the deep things of God. Even the deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knows the things of a man? Except the spirit of the man which is in him. What I mean, except the spirit of the man that is in him. All right. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. No one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. How do you know the word of God? Except the spirit of God teaches you and help you out if not beloved tell anybody any name them tell them first of all like i said if they tell you you don't need the holy spirit to understand the word of god just know that you are you are speaking to an antichrist and you need to run away fast run fast like the bible will say flee you don't need the holy spirit to understand the word of god how that for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? How do you know the things of God if you don't have his spirit in you to identify what God is saying? How do you? How do you know that? You will not know the things of God except the spirit of God this which is in you. So therefore, if you have not received the Holy Spirit in you, beloved, you will not have understanding of what God is. Now we have received, what verse 12? No, no, verse 11 again. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which, which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. No one, the Bible says, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Look at verse 12. Now, 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 we have received not the Spirit of the world. Remember, Jesus has said in John chapter. Uh, 14 verse 17 that the world does not know the Holy Spirit the world don't know the Holy Spirit this world you are living in this world they don't know the Holy Spirit verse 12 says now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God that we might know the th that we might do what no the things that have has been freely given to us by God. So if this scripture is given to us by God, the only way you and I are going to know that which God is saying is through the spirit. If not, forget it. Now, do you now no wonder no wonder A lot go to church on Sunday. Oh, how was it? How was service today? Oh, oh, we had so much fun. Oh, it was so good. Oh, but so what was the message? Um, I think, I think the pastor was, uh, you think? And that was even a couple hours later after church service. Now wait till midweek and ask them. <laughs> Why? Because the Spirit of God is not operating in you. The Spirit of God is not operating in you. How can He even remember, remind you of what 
was said beloved i am not released from this topic of, of this this person of the holy spirit i'm not released because i believe there is more that we ought to know first of all today i want to just end with this so what is the holy spirit all about and 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 what is he here to do he's here to help you jesus says i will send you another helper he's a helper the holy spirit is not it's not about i having a shout okay you know in the in the in the african american you know community we call a shout the holy spirit is not it's not just by shout in church you know when when the you know the high symbols are going on you know with 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 the heartbeat and everybody shaking their legs you know twisting their themselves and all that glory that's that and you said that's the holy spirit that's a joke that's a joke yes i said that's a joke that you know the holy spirit and by end of the day you don't have nothing to demonstrate the power of the holy spirit in you Let's stop kidding ourselves and like i said going to church does not make you a christian beloved going to church don't make you a christian don't be fooled by that 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 re religious thinking going to mcdonald's don't make you a ham that doesn't make you a hamburger doesn't make you a cheeseburger However, the children of God know that when it's time to be in the house of God, oh, glory be to God, that is a time to run in there. But going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Without the Holy so you see the importance of the Holy Spirit. Now, watch this. Verse 13 says, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We haven't come to understand a whole lot of things where God is concerned. Beloved, you remember, I don't know if you remember this, but let me just remind you. God says that they that worship Him, they, so not everybody, they that worship Him, to worship me this way because this is who I am worship me in spirit and in truth which spirit the Holy Spirit who is also the spirit of truth Jesus says even the spirit of truth if you go to um, John 14 17 he says even the spirit of truth and God says that they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Beloved, you cannot bring world, the world's mindset into, the, the God, the, into God's spiritual environment and expect that God will show up. And Have you seen that scripture that says that if, if you are of the flesh of the world, you are an enemy of God. Have you seen that scripture? Go and look for it. I won't give it to you today. I think I'm giving you so many things for free. Go and look for it. I want you to know the word of God. Go and look for it. Go and look for it. So beloved, to say that, yes, I, um, I go to church. I have received Jesus as my Lord and my Savior without the Holy Spirit, are you kidding me? The disciples receive him finally after the resurrection. But Jesus told them that, no, 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 no. Don't go and start talking to nobody about all that I did. Wait for the Holy Spirit first to come upon you. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Because you see, what you don't understand that when I was baptized by John, the Holy Spirit came upon me. And so I was able to do a whole lot of things. All the things that sometimes they bring you cases of epilepsy and 
all those people with diseases and all that and you couldn't help them and then they bring them to me it's because I was full of the Holy Spirit glory be to God beloved without the Holy Spirit I don't know how far you can go but you see with the Holy Spirit you you see <laughs> I'm telling you he's teaching me some things I was one of those people who used to be so I mean I'm a go go getter are you listening to me and uh, I, I would just I, I just have to go get it and sometimes you know I, I sit back and I realize that I, I I also broke a lot of relationships because man it's like man forget it you you know you're not serious you're not you know that kind of stuff and you know and that kind of stuff and all that but I, now I can understand why Jesus was relaxing in the boat, sleeping, and um, the disciples were all, you know, up in the air. You know, some were having a heart attack. Some, their pressure was so high. You know, because, you know, hey, there's, there's problems going on here. And then they see Jesus sleeping and snoring down there in the boat. It's like, hey, master, don't you care? He said, what, what's, your, what's your problem? <laughs> the man was full with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit is in you, beloved, you don't, you don't, you take it easy. Take it easy. Hey! Is Patrick speaking like that? Yes. Take it easy. Because you see, the Holy Spirit will give you an understanding will bring you to that place of understanding. You will, you will understand that when Paul says, I believe, yeah, that the race is not for the swift. You will understand it. Because, I mean, if you think about it, race, I mean, race is for the swift to be the first. Whoever becomes the first, I mean, the, the swift has to be the one who, who wins. That, you know, like boats, <laughs> the fastest man. You know. Is is he still on on running? I had no. There's another person now, right? I understand, there's another person. <laughs> the beloved, the race is not for the swift. Especially this one, this race, this race of God is not for the swift. And, and this is why I believe that even people in pulpit have not come to really understand who the Holy Spirit is. How do you stand in the pulpit and try to condemn another person and you know all that and you think that you are qualified to be in the pulpit and somebody is not qualified and you were called 100 years ago and this person is not all that and that kind of stuff and yet is that the same spirit the same spirit operating in you and that person and all that no i don't think so i don't think so mm -mm. i don't think so go with me to galatians chapter 5 Oh boy, my time is up. Galatians chapter 5. I'll give you this scripture. We'll continue tomorrow. Galatians chapter 5. Go with me to Galatians chapter 5. I want to show you something there real quick. Galatians, please. Galatians. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, I love you today. Galatians chapter 5. Oh. Where's my Galatians? Okay, I'll find my Galatians. <laughs> Go to Galatians chapter 5. Um, look at um, Galatians chapter 5. Are you there? Look at verse 16. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, I think I said Galatians chapter 5. Yeah, look at verse 16. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. And you shall not. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. Because you see, when you walk in the flesh, look at chapter, look at verse 24. Let me see, show you something here. Verse 24. And those of you who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those of you who are of Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Verse 26. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Now you tell me you are envying another pastor or another uh, uh, preacher and all, all those and, and all that. And, and, and you say the Holy Spirit is operating in you. You are, uh, you are a liar. <laughs> it almost came out. You are a liar. Envying. Let us not become conceited. Provoking one another. How do you provoke somebody? Start a fight. Start something. Say something about, you know, uh, uh, Brother K. Brother, oh, he is uh, he is not of God. He, even if you think he's not of God, why don't you let the Holy Spirit do his work? If you think he's not, see, if you understand who the Holy Spirit is, you will let the Holy Spirit do his work and not try to be anybody's personal Holy Spirit. Are you listening? And most of the time, that's what we want to do. You want to try to be somebody's personal Holy Spirit and you are not the Holy Spirit. So leave the Holy Spirit to do his work. You yourself, you need help. You have not been able to receive help yourself, yet you think you can go and help somebody, you know, being to be to be the Holy Spirit, to be judging, leave that. Look at it. He says, let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. If the Holy Spirit is in you, no chance for this desires of the flesh. In the, in the, uh, uh, in the world, which the Holy the world does not know him, the you know the Holy Spirit. The world does stuff like this. My time is up. Somebody, somebody, uh, no, it's not somebody. I think I know the person now in in college. It says when you talk too much, after a while the people don't even listen anymore. <laughs> so I'm keeping this to one hour. And that's even too long anymore. I was sharing with my sister. I said, hey, this Kasalau, <laughs> that's a Ghanaian language. This Kasalau, I don't even know whether people will listen to it or not. Because they will listen. You have to let the Holy Spirit do his work. Don't try to change nobody. You can't change nobody. You have not been able to change yourself. You have not been able to change yourself. You cannot change nobody. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. You don't think God knows why it's so important. Jesus says, I will not leave you like orphans with nobody to take care of you. We have somebody to take care of us. Why don't you allow him to do his work? by relying on him to show you, lead you, direct you. Beloved, I shared a testimony with you yesterday. I would have probably been bitten by these two animals, somehow, some way, found themselves behind my door. Behind my door. After the Holy Spirit has asked me to take a communion, 
and led me to my door and I'm thinking I'm going to take communion. I, it hasn't been too long that I took a communion. No, it was for me to take that communion. Just gave me what to do. Show me what to do right in front, outside my door. And within 30 minutes, I could hear the cry of these animals. I said, it, it sounds like they are close to my door. Yes, lo and behold, they were. And I wanted to go there. Anytime I make an attempt to go there, the Holy Spirit pulls me back. And I'll just sit down there, you know, be talking to Joyce and take my mind off and all that and all that. And I want to go there and it's like it will pull me back. I didn't go to the next day. I opened my door. And here are these two animals sitting right in front of my door. I had to use what I was in my hand to just kind of like fight them off. You don't want to walk with the Holy Spirit for him to talk to you. I don't know how far you can go. You need the Holy Spirit. And you cannot have the Holy Spirit without receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can't. It doesn't... With the Holy Spirit is representing Jesus. So how do you say that I want the representative, but I don't want it? Like you want the you 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 want the 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 fruit. You don't want the root. How, it's the root that brings the fruit. So receive Jesus if you haven't done that yet. You have the opportunity to do that now. Now, after this. I will go and allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in you. He doesn't force himself on anybody. But beloved, I, I can give you testimonies right now that I am so, so, so happy that the Holy Spirit is showing me, maturing me, that the thing, the way I will, I will operate in some things before. Is is uh, because I've asked him to take over. Have you seen anybody being possessed before? Have you seen anybody being possessed before? Ask the Holy Spirit to possess you. Ask the Holy Spirit to possess you, to take over you. Jesus told the disciples, he says, don't, no, 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 no. Don't leave until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Praise the Lord, mercy. Sister Mercy, God bless you. Rama, <laughs> you are doing something to my brother there, huh? I see it. Hey, allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Without the Holy Spirit, I don't know how far you can go. I don't know. Maybe you do know. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. But I have come to realize that without the Holy Spirit... Now, I mean, ask, ask yourself, why did God send the Holy Spirit? Jesus says, it is finished. I finished my work. I got to go. So, fine. He should have left. And that's fine. No problem, right? But he says, no, 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 no. I will not leave you like orphans. I will send you another helper. Another one. I will send you another one. It's, it's exciting. I, you know, I, the more I think about it, about, about it it's, I, I get excited. And uh, stress. Stress. I, I remember I was in India and... Um, Sister Messi, if you remember, um, one one time, one morning, you know, um, she asked me, she said, Pastor, is everything okay? Messi, do you remember? I said, everything okay. Because I had, I was in India, in, you know, doing ministry, but yet I had so many things on my mind. So many things that I believe it showed even in my persona that... <clears throat> Sister Messi asked me, Pastor, is everything okay? I have so many things. Because you see, 
I didn't relax in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, my sister Mercy, look at my face. I am just... Listen, and I realize that it has nothing to do with having everything at your disposal. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. It reminded me of, about a village we visited years ago. And um, we, we thought, of course, we're going to help them, you know, with some stuff. Villagers who don't have much and, you, you know, and all that. And the head of that village approached us and I said, who, who do you people think you are? You're coming to do what? Help us here. Look at, look at how happy we are. Look at our children. And the kids were even playing. They have put some things together, plastic and all that, put it together like a soccer ball, and they were playing it, and they were happy, not wearing, you know, uh, soccer shirts and T-shirts and all that, just bare, bare chested and all that. Some were even naked. They were happy and all that. He says, can your children do that? I will never forget. Can your children do that? Your children have guns in schools. They're shooting themselves in schools. He says, no, go and help your children. We, we are okay. <laughs> Beloved, it's not all about having everything. There's nothing wrong in having it if you can have it. I, I like like Paul. I have I have been elevated. I have seen I have seen riches. I have seen not poverty, but I've seen having so much, and I've seen not having so much, and I've seen not having, and I've seen all. So sometimes I mean I'm when I'm telling you this, I know what I'm saying. But this undescribable joy in my heart has has nothing to do with money because i i have had money and i have stress 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 one time i had 37 employees 37 and um i, I remember i was you know and, and business was kind of challenging and yet you have to pay salaries stress So it's not about having everything. It's about having all in the person of the Holy Spirit. Having all in the person of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? I know I'm, I'm helping somebody out in the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you. I am telling you. You know... I was sharing with Joyce, I said, you, you see my face, you see here, you see like here, stress, stress, stress did that, <laughs> oh yeah, stress did this, my face wasn't like, it used to be like this, you see, stress, now I've asked the Holy Spirit to gradually bring it back to where it was, <laughs> oh glory, hallelujah, beloved, Receive the Holy Spirit and your life will never be the same. Let me pray with you right now. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to receive him now. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for hearing this word. I am convinced I need you. I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I receive you, Jesus. Come into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I thank you. Now baptize me, Jesus. I need you so much. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thank you. If you just pray that prayer, beloved, sincerely in your heart, out of your heart, activating your faith, Jesus has received you. And um, it's you. You are going to see him live in your life. Walk with him. Talk with him. In the meantime, for you to, you know, grow in him and all that, find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church and um, plug yourself in there. Introduce yourself to the leadership 
let them know that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and that you want to grow all right get yourself a good Bible and um, get some teachings in the meantime join me this and every morning okay same time turn on your notification some of you who are not friends with me on Facebook I still have some room before I, I hit that 5,000 or so so um, I have deleted some people <laughs> am, yes I have to and so there's some room there so if you want to be friends with me send me the friends request but don't send me friends request if you are not going to be friends with me on Facebook as this because this is the only way you're going to have a chat with me or he listen to me or hear me or see me so if you are not ready please don't waste your time I'm, I'm deleting a lot of people on there because I don't have to just to say I have friends 5,000 who are not participating dead friends now I had some people who were who have been dead you know I mean physically dead and buried in at the cemeteries whose numbers I have deleted from my phones because what 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 am I doing there how am I going to call them they will not hear so if you want to be a dead friend on with me on Facebook well I will delete you I would rather have two or three people that you know I communicate with I'm not worrying myself anymore about anything listen I mean, it's no more trying to show off to who and for what and so if you if you want to be friends with me let's be friends on this platform turn on your notification button so this way I can come and you you will tune in as well in the meantime in the meantime please go to the uh, Facebook okay my Facebook um, page and um, support the fundraiser we are having now thank I thank all of you who have already donated we have crossed okay we have crossed that um, uh, 200 um, uh, uh, folder into the thousand folder so be part of it all right please I want I need you to be part of this fundraiser today send me your 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 donations all right and share the page with your friends your loved ones we are we are we are getting this media broadcast equipment and a software that will help you will help you to even be part interactively in this broadcast okay was uh, when we are on and for those who um, can see this broadcast live on Periscope those who can see it live on YouTube who can see it live on Twitter all that at the same time we need to get that and so I'm, I'm appealing to all of you be part of this let's do it together because you will then also have an access to be able to share so go to the Facebook all right go to the Facebook page you say you can see it on your on your 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 system which you are using now uh, to see the address or the or go to my my website go to the website you will see that the uh, Also, if you want to contribute or donate you can go do it in the website at the website also www.patrickquenuministries.com you see the the, um, the Different segment and one says donate you can click on there and uh, follow the instructions or the, if you want to use the cash app the number for you to use the cash app is 914-572-9816 all right 914 for cash up only for cash up only 914-572-9816 i want you to know that listen it's so 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 important let us do it we're going to get there we're going to finish this we're going to do it so be part of it share it with your friends your family members because you believe in it let's let them be part of it as well okay i know this message this 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 segment has been blessing you so be a blessing be a blessing God is blessing you so you can be a blessing so be a blessing send send your 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 best donation some people are doing hundred some people are doing you know 50 some people do what the Holy Spirit puts on your heart to do don't disobey him if he tells you to do thousand or just write check for the whole twelve thousand. Do it, do it, do it. I'm telling you, not to say that I'm. Um, you know, we 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 so need. You know, the money 
that I'm, I have to try to say some nice things to you. Beloved, I am not here to, number one, I'm not here to beg you. And number two, and I'm not here to coerce you for you to sow. No, because God loves a cheerful giver, not a fearful giver. Are you listening to me? God loves a cheerful giver. So if you are fearful or you think that somebody have to, I've, I've tell people in the church all the time, anytime you feel compelled by somebody, you know, to, for you to give, don't give. Don't because your giving must be your love for the things of God. Your giving must be your love for God himself. So love the world he gave, he gave. He loved. If God didn't love you and I, we would not be in this dispensation of grace. We would not be here. So when it comes to giving, don't let the devil twist your mind with all kinds of stuff. And that, uh, oh, if and if you don't give, I, you will not hear from me that if you don't give, God will not bless you. Because it's a lie. God chooses to bless anybody he wants. But your love is your understanding that I love him. That's why I'm giving to him. And supporting his work so you know this is a good soil this is indeed a good soil for you to to um, uh, to show in it and uh, to donate go to the Facebook also to the fundraiser and click donate all the information will be there do your part be part of it be part of it it will help that again instantly if you are if you cannot turn you know be on Facebook and you're on Twitter at the time of the broadcast you can watch it on Twitter or you can watch it on YouTube, or you can watch it on Periscope, or I mean, all. Oh, so we need to, we want to get this software and this broadcast equipment, and we need your donation for that. That is all we are asking for. So be part of it, share it, share this uh, message as well uh, to your friends and loved ones. Now, I believe that uh, you're doing well. We'll talk later, okay? God bless you, Allison. Happy birthday to you again and happy birthday to all of you who are celebrating your birthdays today. I want you to know that I love you and you can't do anything about it. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Heaven has smiled upon you for you to know that today is another day that heaven is thinking of, of you to uh, let you. So go ahead, go, go out and, you know, celebrate your birthday. Okay. Listen, get some ice cream. Get some ice cream, all right? My favorite, butter pecan. <laughs> Did you hear that? Get some ice cream, all right? Enjoy yourself. And um, above all, just, just know and talk to the Holy Spirit. Let him just guide you and spend some time with him today, all right? God bless you. God bless you. I love you. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And you know, <laughs> and you know that getting, get understanding.